I see there's some pictures out here. What's, what's this picture here? Um, this was it. One of Walter's uh, job reception or something. Hmm. So that's that's you and him right there. Uh-huh. Lord, look. You, you I, I know I'm not, I'm not supposed to say this and stuff like that, but you was a real cutie. Look at that smile. Look at that cutie smile. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, I tell you, hey, I like it. I like that. <laughs> that was, that's a group, a group of guys that he worked at the mm. base and the shipyard. Because... Mm. The first time that I met his uh, supervisor or wh- who the person in charge of a, of that department, hmm. they had it at someone's house. Hmm. And when I, we Walter and I went in, this guy came over to me, Rick, Rich, I mean, and he said, "I want everybody to listen." I have an announcement to make. Mm. The lady has just entered the palace <laughs> of the queen. <laughs> and they said, Rich, who is I? I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you know Walter Bagby? You know Walter Bagby? You know, we know him, but you know of him. <laughs> have you seen the part that makes him who he is. And they said, no. Well, they had no idea what Rich was getting ready to do. He was just getting ready to introduce me mm-hmm. to the crowd. <laughs> he said, now, if you've been accustomed to saying what comes in your head, no, in your from your mouth, and you're doing it in gist, or you're just doing it to be funny. Um, you're just doing it. I don't want you to do any of those. Because this lady here is not accustomed to the low down <laughs> conversation that can go on. And stuff. Do you understand? Now, Walter is standing there right beside me. I guess he said, well, what else is Rich going to say? For He said, for just for a for purpose of clarity, this is Dorothea Norman Bagby, sometimes known as Joe. He said, and if you get permission, you may call her Aunt Doe. Ladies and gentlemen, Aunt Doe. <laughs> but Rich, I said, I mean, bruh, I said, if I have to go to another function the way Walter works and I'm introduced this way, I'm going to have to certainly get me an introduction outfit the way. Rich became the person whenever Walter was going on a business trip, Rich would travel with him. If Rich had to go someplace, Walter would travel with Rich. It got to the point that the, it was synonymous. You saw one, you saw the other. And I said to myself, Walter has a nice group of people with whom he works. But it was a bad pool. The reason they had it at the house because it was going to turn into a pool party. I know what you put on when you go to the pool or to the beach. Put on a swimsuit or trunks or something like that. And you don't just jump in the water with, with what you have on. I said, well, when the folks going to change to go into the water? One girl came and she said, I can't wait any longer. I want to get a, I want to get a advanced dip. That's what she said. I said, oh, she must have her swimsuit on underneath what she's wearing. And she didn't have anything on the, uh, but her foundations. They went out there, bruh, at the pool. 
and just jumped in with the clothes they had on. With the with the underwear with the underwear they had with the. Uh, no, they. I mean, just the. Uh, well, you say foundation. You mean underwear? I mean, uh, like, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, well, the men. The men would just be uh, the, the trunks, and the and the woman would just be the bra and panties. What do you? That's what I. That's it. Is they said we have all our. They said we have on our foundations. Mm. Uh, and, uh, underneath this garment, uh, will be our foundations. That's when I said they're going there to change. Mm. Take that what they have on the dress or the, whatever they had on. They're going to take that off because they're going to go down there to their foundations. I said, they're going to be in there with nothing with trunks. The guys going to have on trunks. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know they were going to jump right in the water with the clothes on. Yeah. And when I went out there to follow to see what was going on, Rich came to me and said, doll baby, you don't have to jump in there. If you don't want to jump in there with your clothes on, you don't have to. To let you know I mean it, I'm not going in either until you go in. I said, I said, Rich, you don't have to do that. I want you to go and be your usual self. He said, that is why I am saying I'm not going in until you go in. I'm not going in with my little my my brand new outfit I have on. He said, I just got this the, the other day for this fair affair. And I don't want him to get wrinkled and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I said, Walter said that when he was, when he would go on business trips, he always felt relaxed because of his traveling partner. He was talking about Rich. Rich became a supervisor or something in that department. And you would go with this, this Walter somewhere and Rich would be in the company. Mm -hmm. He would come to you and then Walter would introduce you to Rich. No, he would uh, introduce him as Rich, not Rich or mm -hmm. just Rich. He would say, you cannot be the one that Walt talked about. It, you can't, you, you cannot be the one. He said, yeah, I am. You know, they all you will say, what you see is what you get. Now, could you could you swim where you're athletic? Uh, uh, you know, when you were younger? I don't think I had take, no, I wasn't that sw a swimmer. Mm -hmm. I would I would duck, like the little children do, like paddle in the water and play play around. Mm -hmm. But I knew that was not a night for me to get in the pool and do what mm -hmm. I can do. Mm -hmm. Of course, I said I'd get there and drown. But, but were you athletic? Did you do any other athletic things? I mean, what what kind of sport did you do? Sports? Or what? What did you? I would do anything but. But swim. I didn't. I didn't like wrestling. Because I thought that was just too mean. It's mean. <laughs> too mean. I mean, they had an expression on their faces that said, we're going in for the kill. <laughs> and some of those girls could wrestle. So I'd rather wrestle with the boys. You'd rather wrestle with the boys. Uh -huh. I don't want to hear about that outcome. Let me go back. What else could you do? Since you're not wrestling unless you're wrestling with the boys. What, uh, you know, what other athletic things did you do? Football. You did football. Basketball. Basketball. Uh, track. Ah, were you fast? I was pretty good. Oh, they put me, they always put me at the uh, um, the last person running in the race. In the, in the relay? You mean uh -huh. the relay? So you, you would, not the anchor race, but the last one that's supposed to be the fastest. The last one's supposed to be the fastest. No, maybe, yeah, the last one's supposed to be the fastest, right? The last. Oh, so you were the fastest one. That's where I didn't they were. know that. The guys has told me, uh, little doe, we want you to uh, be the this position. Mm. I said, why do I have to be last? Every time we have a, um, a race or something like field event, you always 
but me last. <laughs> One guy said, maybe it's because we want to look after you because you're you're our only little 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 girl on the team, and we need you. Well, I was impressed when he said they needed me. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to say another word. Is, is that why when you play football, you won't give me the football and send me through the line with all those guys coming at me? So you, <laughs> so you play, you, there was like a, a the male and female track, male and female f- football on the same team? No, this I is, was just the only girl. Oh, just playing. Okay, just so that's like playing. Yeah. In the field events. Well, what what what, uh, what did you do? Athletics at school or something like that? What what did you do? What, whatever they had in activities to perform, even in our PE classes, mm-hmm. they always sent me fast, first or last. Mm-hmm. The potato race uh, was a game of, of an event that I didn't ever understand. For a long time. If it's a potato race, why they were using blocks of wood representing the potato? I, I don't know what you, I thought, it, I always thought it was a potato sack race where you put uh, two people a race and, and they put, each one put um, a leg in a potato sack. And that's that, but that's because it's a potato sack race. They just that's throw right. up sack. So what's this block business? What, what these? They substituted the block for the potato, for the actual potato. They didn't have re- the real potatoes in the race. They used the block. Okay, I'm, I'm still confused. What, what what did they do with this block? You used it like it was, it was a potato. And? <clears throat> so, huh? and that was it. What would you have to do? What, what, what was that? Oh, just to- they would have the, uh, I guess, they had some circles. And you get at the end of the line, the t- team would be. And at the time of goal, you take the first person would run up to the first block, first circle, circle. Mm-hmm. with the block in it. Bring it back. Give it to the second person. And that person, second person would go up to the second block. Alternating like that. Circle, yeah, back and forth. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. I've never seen that but kind of race. They didn't ever explain. I didn't ask the question because I thought if I asked the question, they may say girls can't. Uh, do uh, that. Okay. And I said, I wanted to make it sure that when I was out there participating with the guys, that I would be having all the fun in the world and I didn't want to put any little dents into it. So I said, and I don't want to have a doll, baby. Because I thought that was sissy. Mm. Being a sissy, that was my sister. My sister would play with a doll, baby. Case in point, the day, one day we were, we were not going to, we were not going to have a warm up game before 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 breakfast, but I had to be had to be in there kick, fixing food for breakfast. So that meant I didn't participate in the warm up. Okay, wait. Well, so uh, how about how old were you then? Uh I guess I was about <coughs> about nine. I guess nine. Okay, so now here's here's the here's the question. Your your sister were doing uh, things with with dolls or whatever, but you were cooking. Wasn't that wasn't the cooking more uh, girl like than or just as girl like as survival? Because oh. my mother was sick and she couldn't <laughs> cook. <clears throat> my daddy had gone to work hmm. and he had to work, so when they left was <coughs> is a for me to go in there and try to figure some food or what they could, we could eat. Mm. That's when my sister decided, you don't have to cook anything, just give me some oatmeal. You don't eat raw, raw oatmeal. Oh. <laughs> so I just got the box and tried to read in front of me. How do you fix, you know, how do you eat oatmeal? 
tell you down. Has a boiling water. Put a pinch, a pinch of salt in it. And, and a teaspoon of margarine in it. I said, I can do that. I stood there and looked and looked. And wanted that pour, that water to start boiling. It looked like the to meat took forever. Oh, you know, a, a watch pot doesn't boil. See, I didn't know this. You know, it would done that to put the water, let it boil, do something else, set the table, do something. But I'm standing there watching the water start boiling so I can fix these oatmeal for little sister. And she's come, will come in the kitchen and say, haven't you finished my oatmeal yet? I said, no, not yet. It isn't time. I have to wait until it boils. Why does it have to boil? I said, little sister, that when you put an oatmeal in there, this and this kind of oatmeal, you have to put it in the water. After it has boiled, it, got, it has to be very hot. She said, oh, I can do that. I said, no, little sister. I don't want you to may, may burn yourself. She was say, well, I wish you'd hurry up. Because <laughs> The longer I have to wait, the hungrier I'm beginning. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you're not old. You're not too old to wait. Mm -hmm. I said, everybody else is going to be waiting. Do we have to all wait and eat at the same time? I said, what's well, the rule? <laughs> we got to wait and eat. Oh, what am I going to do in the meanwhile? I said, meanwhile, you can sit there and wait. Then she said, I'd like to ask you something. You have a doll upstairs on the side of the bed. Could I just go up there and hold it? I said, uh-huh. Well, when she said hold it, I mean, it means to hold it. That's all it said. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. You were incorrect. But she said, I'll take good care of it, just like it's your very own <laughs> I had to yell at the guys, can't participate in the warm-up. I got to cook. Okay, when you're finished, come on out. I said, okay. And the sister said, can I really look at your doll? I said, yeah. Brother, this was before dolls were blinking their eyes. You know, if you wanted your eye, the, the eye of the doll to do it and move it, you take your finger and push it up and down. You know. mm -hmm. That doll must have been four years old. It looked just like they had gotten it out of the store. Only thing was different was the mechanics of the doll. What it could do and could not do. Which was not anything but sit there and look at you, you know. After breakfast, I said to I said, little sister, where is the doll? She said, and that old thing is, that old thing is upstairs. Put it back where I found it. I said, well, that was nice. I was so proud of my little sister. Brother, when she bought, when I went up there and found the doll, the doll had one eye <laughs> that was <laughs> going up and down. The hair that they had on the doll's head was like an inverted uh, like not a safety pin, a uh, straight pin mm -hmm. that has been Somebody curved the end of it, mm, mm, mm. and they pushed his hair down into the head, this styrofoam head. I didn't know the doll had sat. Well, I didn't know the doll had any of those things, because I didn't want to be bothered with those sissy things. And she said, I had a, we had a good time. And she said, can I play with it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, you can play with it forever. Mm. And she said, you giving it to me? I said, Little sister, the way you changed this doll, only you could appreciate it. <laughs> so she said, 
And I, I said, I tell you, what, what, come on there and watch us play football. Why don't we, that's too rough for me. That's what I said. She was acting like a sissy. No one told me that little sister was acting like a sissy, but only the girls, the little girls in the neighborhood were playing with, little, I call them mama activities, you know. Uh, yeah, but by sissy, you actually mean like, like girly, more uh, girly uh, things. So, girly? Mm-hmm. But they were calling it sissy, sissy like, sissy like. And when I was out there playing my football, uh, they would say, I don't know why she can get out there and run with those those guys like that. And that was insulting because I was out there too. You can't say running with those guys. They want to, If they wanted to be careful, they should say playing f- f- football. But it was touch football, right? I mean, it wasn't tackle. Tackle. Tackle football. That's why they sent me through the middle. Okay, hold on a second. Now, I, I don't mean to be uh, the rude, dis- whatever, whatever I'm, I'm going to say next. But if you're if you're the only girl playing tackle football and they got a tackle, they, they, they means they're they're, they're uh, tackling all over your body and, and touching you all over and stuff like that. You uh-huh. care? <laughs> exactly that. But I didn't see it or feel it. I just wanted to know I was doing that play right. And when they sent me through that center and those big guys that you, you know, I mean, they did not just, that was not touch football. Mm, mm. But, and one day I did not, I came out there for the warm up and they were all in the bottle. And so, this is something new. They get me for this warm up. They get in the half bottle first. I missed all of that because I was not able to get out there time wise to do for the <laughs> warm up. They were discussing the possibility of me having to come off of the team. The only thing that came in my mind was. I didn't carry that ball right. Or we were going for the touchdown, the guy was throwing the ball and the person, some other person intercepted the ball. And I was able not to get it. And I think we lost that day by a point or something. I thought that's what they were talking about. They're going to let somebody else be the person to receive the ball. Another person to go through the line carrying the ball. And I asked the question, why? Why? I said, uh, when are we going to put this into practice? They said, from now on. And I thought, I got to talk this over with my daddy and ask my daddy, is that the way you play football? And I said, maybe I should ask him, is this the way you play football when you're on someone's lawn playing. We played, our football field was the side, the, the end of an apart, row of apartments. And this place was open. We always, when we cut the lawn with our little push mower, we would always go over there to that particular place and cut the grass to keep our playing field. Mm-hmm. Manicured. And the children would do this themselves. We mm-hmm. young folks on the team, mm-hmm. and the children who were not playing football would sometimes come over there and pick up stuff, you know, sticks and stuff. The kids may have been playing, and then mm-hmm. uh, they need to be thrown away or put in the trash. But they told me the reason. <clears throat> I had I was be, couldn't play anymore. Lionel that lived next door to me didn't tell me this. He said, Doe, you're developing and we don't want to hurt you. And we don't want you to be hurt. So would you object for coming off you no know, coming mind coming off of the team? 
in a playing position and be the announcer. Now you talking about I'm going to announce something <laughs> and I can't play only because I'm in developing. I said, what am I developing into? I said, I don't know what they're talking about. He said, how is that? I said, all right. All right. What am I saying all right to? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> well, let me tell you. That particular game that day we had was probably my best. It was like I was trying with a Heisman Trophy or something. That, that, that was the last game you played. The last game I played because I was developing. Mm-hmm. I said, now, but then uh, Mickey said to me, you're in, you'll be going to another school soon. And we want you to be able to carry some sports and um, experience. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know what your physical education teacher is going to be, or what class is going to be like. Hmm. I said, will we be playing out here? He said, no, you'll be playing at the school where you'll be attending. I said, will you, all of you be playing with me? No, that's when they're going to have girl, only girls playing. No, he didn't say girl, he said ladies playing. And the guys will be playing with the other guys. So I said, but thank you for having allowed me before I developed. <laughs> I didn't know, I went, I didn't know what they're talking about developing. Uh, but I use their terminology because that's what the guy said. Mm-hmm. But from then on, when we would get on that bus to go to school, if anyone came in there and sat in the chair beside me, on the seat beside me, and they were not being very gracious to me, one of those guys would say, can't you find another seat? When one of your football buddies from the, from the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They became my protectors. Oh, so you, you, you had a whole... Bodyguards or whatever, but I didn't ever know that. I just thought they did that because I was a former <laughs> player on the team. I said, you know, that's why the, probably the other girls were not playing because they didn't understand. They didn't have any knowledge about it than I did. I just mm-hmm. thought it was the best thing in the world <laughs> to go out there and then run in and you hit your head on the center block they may have out there or run into a tree and did I like it was hurt? No, I would I'd be hurting so bad <laughs> sometimes my, my little hands were sore because I'm they were pushing me through that line and you your little hands on the that grass and stuff. But see I didn't know I didn't that's not the way you have to fall. You don't have to fall face and hands first. If you do, you can cup you can cup your hand. So you don't get the full impact. But I thought if I did that, that would be considered being sissy. I said I didn't want to do anything to take away my game. So now when you went when you went to this other school, that means you actually had to do sissy things. What kind of what kind of uh, All girly these things? Sissy games were like uh Golf. Oh, okay. Just and it was just fundamental hitting them, taking the club mm-hmm. and hitting the ball mm-hmm. on a grass mat in the gym, mm-hmm. and you hit the ball, and it's supposed to run to a certain portion on the floor, mm-hmm. and that's all you had to do. Okay, learning so was, the basic swing. Okay, so that's golf. What else did? Didn't, didn't have any golf. Mm-hmm. The guys were doing some golf things in a different manner than the girls. The girls would be over there swinging, you know, mm-hmm. like the little, little ladies swinging. 
I said, I don't know about this. This is a hard game. I asked the teacher. She said, any questions? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, what's your question? I said, will we be playing that kind of uh, golf? She said, well, you are playing the kind that you'll be playing. She said, this is what the girls do in their fundamental learning how to swing. Swing and hit. That's what she was saying, hit. And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but there's always a uh, uh, military brat in your group. Oh, we're in a military area, Norfolk. That's a, yeah. Her name was Mary. No, it wasn't Mary. It was Laura. Laura was standing there with her club with an attitude of, I wish they'd get the show on the road, you know. And the teacher had said, we going to all swing at the same time. In case someone is slow or faster, it would throw off the rhythm to the person who's going to be at the end of the line when you're hitting the ball. Had that all straight? Could they wait? No. We waited, except the Army brat. And that was the first time I'd ever heard the expression, Army brat. No, military brat. She hit the ball, brother. And when that ball landed, it didn't land on the line where it was supposed to be. It hit my thigh. Mm. This thigh right here. Mm. And it was almost like I was paralyzed. I had never had anything to get me hurt like that. Well, we had to... She, Blew the whistle, and we had to go in the gym, take a shower. But when I was trying to get up to go into the gym, I mean, the shower room, the pain was so terrible that I had to be, the guys from the boys' side of the gym had to come on and take me into the shower room. I didn't know my leg was hurt that bad. It was, it felt more like a sting than anything else. And I heard the teacher saying to her, in the future, when I say wait, I mean wait. If I say go, you may go. Anybody who gets out of line will be receiving an incomplete practice for the and what they would both be doing. And I hope, she said, I hope that when she goes home or we don't have to take her to the hospital or to a doctor, they don't have a bill because I am personally going to your house. She said, my daddy is deployed. That was the first time I'd heard about anybody being deployed. I thought that was a kind of nice thing, you know. I said, that's why she knows everything, because her daddy is deployed. And uh, she said, for your information, young lady, I'm talking about since your daddy is not here, he's away working. And my mom and Ted, she said, she said well, since your parents are away working. I know there is a, some benefits that they had would take care of her medical bill if she has one. I felt so sorry for that child. And I said, she didn't know that she wouldn't want to hurt me like that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm not able still to walk out of the gym to get ready to go to my next class. Because my leg is hurting me. She came over and she said, Oh, don't be don't be like that. She said, it all go away. I've been hit before. Well, 
my little experience said, if you even hit before you must be playing baseball and the ball hit you. If you've been hit before, you were playing tackle and you were running through the line. If they were talking about somebody racing, somebody went past you and got to the finishing line before you did. My conception of what it meant was very limited. And I told her, she said, do you forgive me? I said, yes, I do. And I said, thank you for explaining to me why you hit me like that. I thought she was doing me a favor, but I had li limited experience so that from that day on, I can remember they start having uh, part of our, our one day that the guys and the girls were in class together. Now, I was home to a peg, so she said, what you did choose your team. Oh, what's All that? What, oh, hold on, what's that term? Home to a peg. What? What did you just say? They was said home. They were home to a peg. That means you're at home. You're comfortable. Home to a peg. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I thought that was something new. I hadn't heard it before. That expression. But brother, when they start choosing uh, people on your squad on your squad. Now, I'm trying to figure what a squad is now. I said, we didn't play this at home on the, back, the side yard. They was, I want you. And you go over there. I want, and they go right past somebody and say, and I want you. Mm -hmm. And they go over there and join you. And then the girls would start saying, I want you. And she said, oh. I said, to myself. And I want you. And, and she was one of those little prissy lady girls. I said, well, when are they going to pick me? So the teacher said, they'll get you, dear. Everybody. We had it worked out that every, everybody would be selected. I said, okay, thank you. And I said, that makes sense. It doesn't matter which who selects you. All of us will be doing the same thing at the same time, I guess. Brother, when they selected everybody, including me, I did not have any idea. That's when I saw touch football for the first time in reality. Rather than tackling, you just touch. And you touch. And she said, if you are touched, it's considered a touched up. Touchdown. I said to myself, well, the touchdown would be uh, when you get to the goal, but if you're just in the field, that wouldn't be a touchdown, would it? I'm just... That particular rule came into effect to let you know if you were touched and you and it considered that would be considered a touchdown, you didn't have the space in the gym for any extensive running and getting to the touch, of getting to the goal poles and that kind of stuff. This was all preliminary uh, activities that you do when you play in football. Mm. And I said, I hope that bell rings fast because <laughs> I want to get out of this place because they just don't know how to play football. So the teacher said to me, how are you feeling? I said, I'm fine. She said, how is that thigh feeling? I said, it's fine. <laughs> she said, everything is fine. I said, except for one thing. When are we going to play some real football? She said, we're doing that. I said, no, you need a football. You don't need, you don't need a, I forgot what she said. She said, but you're using the football. I said, but, I said, those girls aren't using a real football. She said, well, that's, 
the football is for the guys. Brother, that was one day that I realized I was no longer a boy. And I couldn't play the boy games. I had to play those sissy games where you couldn't hit the ball. You could not run with the ball. And you could not, some things you couldn't do. I said, that's why they put me off the team in the yard where we live. They were getting me ready for this type of thing and not because I was developing. Developing had anything to do with games for for women and games for men. Rules, I mean. I said, well, only thing I can do is when my daddy comes home from this evening from the bus, I can go to him at the dinner table and explain to him, I now know how to play football where I will be selected to play. And while I I have not developed, I'm still developing, Daddy looked at me, put the fork down, and said, what you say, baby? And I repeated it with pride. <laughs> I understood now why they put me off the team. He said, when did they put you off the team? I said, they didn't say I had to be off the team, but they wanted me to be the announcer for the team. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the game of the day. It was always the game of the day. We didn't play at night. So it was a game of the day. He said, uh, you don't like that, do you? I said, I don't mind it. I said, because when I go to school off or from the bus, I don't have to worry about a thing. He said, why? I said, because my football buddies look after me. He said, oh, that's just because you're probably shorter than they are. I said, no, they say I'm good. And my, my sister said, do you see, Daddy, why I don't bother that? Look how she looks when she comes from, from practicing. My brothers were next to me. Said, I wish I could be a year older. Maybe they let me play in it. So he said, what Daddy said to him. I tell you what I want you to do. When they go out there to play or warm up, he said, you go out there and stand on the sideline. Don't get in their way. He said, because when a person's running like that, they don't have the time to clear the area, see everything is all clear, and then try to run. It's not ball, look, 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 run. He said, doesn't work that way. I said, I know my daddy knew so much about football. I've never seen him out there playing football. But I guess he said, just common sense, you know, you just, it has to be a routine that you would do practice. He said, that's why you have the warm-ups, to warm yourselves up, to get ready to play. My brother said to me, you think if I went out there, and pay attention, they would let me get on the team and play with you, with me. I said, uh huh, they'll let you play. I said, but you won't be playing just me, you'll be playing with the other guys out there. He said, I know it, but do you ever have a time that you play your football warm ups and they're just you? And it'd be the other guy. I said, no, <coughs> your team. Hmm. And your team, everybody plays. Well, what other games did you, you have football, or you have this other kind of football, you have track. What are, what are, what are the uh, sports kind, sporting kind of games did you play? Basket, just say basketball. Not yet. Basketball. Now, you little shorty thing. You were, you were back then, at this day, well, you were shorty, as they say. I was you, a shorty. And they made me get, they would always, the girls on the other team, squads, would always follow me. 
because they figured I couldn't shoot to get a basket because mm. I was so short. Mm. And my teammates would say, if they pick you, go with them. And I want you to shoot the eyes out of the ball. Eyes out of the ball. Oh my, no one think of have eyes. The only thing I could think about, they have eyes painted on the ball. And I had to shoot the eyes out of the ball. That's what they were talking about. Get a basketball. Get a basket. I said myself, that ball is too heavy for me to shoot the eyes out of it. I wanted to another way I can put that basketball in that net. We didn't have a a real live net on in the community. We had a a crate a, made out of wood, little slabs of it. Had the bottom cut out so the ball would drop through, and the top had it cut out, but that was larger. So in my mind's eye, your goal is to put the ball in the large part. If you get it in the large part, it'll slide down through the small part. Didn't know that that was the goal of the game. Brother, when I went out there for the for the first game, I saw those girls coming from a section they called the Berkeley Bulldogs. They called themselves the Berkeley Bulldogs. They should have called them the Wrecking Crew. I have never seen girls that large unless I was looking at something on, on a movie or somebody was telling me about it. I had not ever seen anybody that large. And they had filthy mouths. Every other word, they would be saying something. And I asked one of the guys on the team, our team, do we have to play this, these girls anymore? He said, why do we fear? I said, because before they do anything, they say such bad words. He laughed at me. He said, you know what? What you heard today was mild. I've heard it worse than that. And I said, oh my gosh. If I tell my daddy he's saying bad words when we play the game, he's going to tell me that I have to come off of the team. That was the only reason I didn't tell my daddy. And I guess my daddy was wondering, why is she slow going out there to play the game? Today, he thought it was just that day. He thought maybe I wasn't feeling well or something. And he came out there and stood. This was on a Saturday because Daddy was home. Daddy just stood. And I guess he was watching me to see if I was okay. Because he knew I had been kicked off the team because I was developing. It's <laughs> a football team, but this was basketball now. Uh -huh. mm. I said, but... I didn't, this didn't have anything to do with my basketball. That was football we were talking about. I was kicked off. But you, my mind's eye, you develop only if you play football. <laughs> 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 then you see why. <laughs> they didn't have any girls on that team. Because hmm. they figured little Doe doesn't know that much about it. We can tell her, if you believe it. Hmm. When my daddy saw us finishing, the first question he had was, Sister, why is it when all of you line up, he said, you line up across like this, why is it they put you in the middle of that line? What's the reason? And I try to think of a reason other than I was developing. I didn't understand developing, really. But but guys had said it, and that's, that was the law. But that was football. That was football. But we was playing basketball now. He was watching you play football or basketball. What was he watching you play? Uh, that day was uh, basketball. 
but he since he was talking about it, he brought up the football and the basketball. He was saying that there are rules for each of the sports that is a little different and the the it goes with the outcome of the game you're doing. So he said they didn't explain to you the purpose they were sending you in the middle most of the time, did they? I said, they said I was good. He said, good enough to them to push you around. He said, I want you to have some second thoughts when they're sending you through that line. He said, you think about the end result of going through that line. He said, if you notice, you're the only one there pushing and tackling. I said, my dad didn't know about all that. Why did he tell me? He could have been out there being a coach in my mind's eye. And he said, interesting game. And you like it, don't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, why don't you go in there and play with your sister? I said, that old sissy game. He said, you don't like the sissy game? I said, no, sir. I see. I said, she had to be a, a little lady. I said that like that. He said, don't knock what... He said, don't knock an idea or something where you don't fully understand all of it. He said, you're in the early stages of football playing or basketball playing or whatever. He said, Use your ears to hear what's going on and your eyes to see what's going on. Use your hands to hold on to what you have. I said, now, this is the man who should be our coach. He said, thanks for letting me stand on the sideline. Sideline. He could just sit stand on the cement. Because that's what was on the sideline. It was a cement walkway. And then he said, now when you do the warm-ups, he said, when is the game, the, the real game? I said, we can't play that yet. He said, why, baby? Why can't you play? No, I said, I can't play. He said, well, then why is that? You can't play, and the other guys on the people on the team are playing. I said, "Cause I'm on, I'm the only little lady on the team, and I'm developing." That's what my daddy said. It's time to talk about development. What those guys meant. When my daddy was talking to me, I said, "I wonder what book did he get this from?" Cause my I never had never seen my daddy play football. He was at work. He told me from then on, he said, rather than fin trying to finish a meal, he said, sports you start fixing the meal a little bit early. Earlier in the day. So when they have the warm-ups, you'll be able to go out with the with the warm-up. Because that's preliminary. He said that's important. To talk about how you're going to play the game. Who's going to do what and why. I see they do all that in a warm-up. He said, in your little, he said, your community football team would have that ruling because they want to refresh your mind each day before you play. I said, oh, got to get up early and cook. So I go, I did a warm-up session. I got to do this, because that's what girls do. Only because I'm the only girl on the team. Mm -hmm. I got to learn everything, what the girls do and what the boys do. Brother and my sister, my sister will be sitting on the stoop in front of our apartment with a doll. The doll that she took and mutilated almost. <laughs> saying, mm, I can't play with that stuff. Ooh, look at my hands all dirty. Oh, 
my hair, my hair, no, my ribbons would be coming off and she, she would have a fit because her ribbon was not in the way that I put it on there. We did, did her hair. My mother would say, Joyce, what are you doing? She said, just watching, just watching me, watching me play that football. She ought to, she ought to be, no, she may have to uh, not go to the center recreation center. We had two recreation centers in the area. We call it the little park, little children's park. And they had the big children's park at the front. Yes, a supervisor for our park. And she always had an, an assistant. She called them her associate. So we thought, many of us thought, that if anybody was in charge of something and you had somebody to help you, they were your associate. Well, then you're saying assistant, associate. Brother, the word got around. The team to beat for the game coming up for football was when the Oak Leaf Park, I forget what we were called, the Oak Leaf Park, some name, this was kind of, kind of, kind of get like a, girl would be playing the Berkeley Bulldogs. And I said to myself, when Mrs. Goodman made that a statement, Berkeley Bulldogs, I said, I'm going to have to ask for immediate removal of me because I'm not going to go out there with those girls. Now, why I don't want to go with the girls? Because I did not want to be with those girls because they said bad words so much. Not anything about skill or anything. The other, the guys were saying, oh man, you mean I got to meet him again? I said, only thing I can do is get off the team for real. And they don't have to push me off. And more so I can be, and I can tell them I want to be a lady. They said, you want, well, who's going to go through the center? I said, you had to find you somebody because I'm not going out there with those girls saying those bad words. One guy said, if, you, we, if we promise that I'll talk to the coach on that team, the one of the coaches, and ask them, is it possible they could play the game without having to say bad words? And uh, I said, if you can do that, I'll play. But I'm not going to play uh, if they don't say all those bad words. Brother, they were ready for the CI. They were ready for the CIAA tournament. They were so good. And they didn't care. They had a girl on it. We had a girl on our team. Hit me just as hard as they were hitting those guys. And I said, this is not for me anymore. If it had not been for that championship game, they were going to play off. I'd still be playing football. My mother said to me one morning after that, she said, aren't you going to go out there for the warm-ups? I said, no, ma'am. Mm, no more warm-ups. I said, I don't have to go. So she said, mm. she said, but you enjoyed it, did you? I said, yes, ma'am. But that was the community football. I'm going. I'm trying to get back to, to the school part. What game? What games? What sports did you do in school? You know, and this was, you know, I, I guess uh, after after nine years old, like 10, 11, 12, You know, in high, in junior high, junior high, yeah. Uh, they called it had a a format which for so many weeks. Uh, you would play preliminary. Uh, I'll just say a ba a basketball. Mm -hmm. They would do the fundamentals. Learn. You'd be exposed to the fundamentals of the game, and also 
uh, the scoring thing to, you know, you don't get uh, the opportunity just because you got down there to the end of the basket first. That didn't qualify you to get that, get a go to the free line to shoot. You had to earn it. Hmm. Okay, well, that, that's, that's basketball. We had a little bit of golf there. Uh, we have uh, football, football, of course. Now, what other sports? What other, after that, what kind, what kind of sports you do for? You know, did I say track? Yeah, track. Yeah, like that. What what, what other sports did they have? What other, whatever activity did they have? Like at, what, after junior high school, what did you what what did you do there? Well, after junior high school, mm. oh, I became the professional basketball observer and teacher. Because <laughs> when when that time we got to high school, I mean college. The guy who would be at the uh, microphone, be at the microphone, they didn't have a real microphone. He was supposed to be a microphone, you know, calling the game. He said to us, I'm going to say certain things to let you know what's happening. He said, if I say this, what's that going to be? Somebody said two fingers. You didn't know you did not two fingers. That's two points. <laughs> two points. <laughs> They said, they said, well, suppose you don't get but one point. Would you hold up one finger? He said, well, no, I'm not going to hold up anything. I'm going to put my hands right here. They said, like it's hurting, you know. They, those little girls didn't know anything about football, I thought. But then he said, if they are going down the plane with the ball and they are bouncing the ball, Double dribble. Yes, that's basketball now, huh? That's double dribble. Wait, the game is that with a double dribble. I knew double meant two. Well, where, in my mind's eye, where is the other ball <laughs> for double dribble? That's the only way you can do double dribble is to have two balls, I thought. The guy with on at his feet microphone was playing, and he is going to the line because the violation indicated that he, in the effort his double dribble, mm. he did something or traveling. That's when it was, mm. and I said traveling. The guy who was supposed to be helping the game with us. That means you're just taking the ball and you're moving in a way without bouncing bouncing your ball mm. or something. And he was trying to explain it to us. And all of us said, oh, what you mean? Wait, that's not what it really was, but that was the way he could explain it to us. Brother, we, we, we would leave the game going to walking down the street to get the bus to go home. Only thing they were talking about, you know, I like that double dribble one. So I said, I didn't like that. I I prefer that the one you when you traveling and you're not on a bus. And that's how much we understood what would be just to happen. Yeah, but those are the rules. I mean, what other games did you play when you got to uh, junior high or high school? What, what, what high school? What 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 sports did you do in high school? That was one of them. What, what other ones did you do? We see football, basketball, track. Mm. The guys did wrestling. I, we didn't. Mm. The women didn't do that. Mm. Uh, and there was another one. Football, basketball. Wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. Mm -hmm. We didn't do, the girls did not do wrestling either. Because they said it was something reason why they, that was just for the guys. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they would put the uh, reason sometimes because of space. Because mm -hmm. the guys would be on one side of the, of the gym and the women would be on the other side of the gym. Same time. Mm -hmm. So when you went into that, in the gym room, or look at the, us out there having class, 
you would just wonder, wonder why they just don't have let let the men, the guys play one day, and the girls play another day, and they have enough space. No one told us the reason that our classes were held that way because of space. It was definite because of space, mm -hmm. and they probably didn't have all the teachers that they needed for instruction that much mm. because some of the the wrestling thing I just saw it that was just too rough and I, and I think right now it was instilled in my mind because if I see the basketball players playing and they get in have an altercation and they start horsing around or wrestling my mind grew right back when I was a little kid trying to learn the game and I said that's why wrestling we didn't have wrestling in our community because first of all you had to have certain kind of uh, women and men to, to do that you had to have <laughs> certain kind of things for basket for wrestling and you have to be able to throw people now, no one told me you had to throw, but I saw many bodies moving across the floor when they were on the mat, when they were on the mat, mm. mat mm. Uh, many times, but they didn't ever hurt themselves, brother. They knew how to fall, but that's my saying. Okay, you didn't do, I'm trying to figure out what you did when you got to high school, when you got to college, what sports did you do when you got to, to these, I think not, not what, what you didn't do, what did you do? Gymnastics. What kind of gymnastics? Did you do? I mean, when I was when I was in high school, I used to do high bar. What did you do? High bar, par parallel bars, uh, uh, you know, uh, pole vault no, rings. What, our what, what mind you say? was uh, tumbling. What? Swimming. Okay. Tennis. Hmm. Uh, some kind of. Uh, like some gym fundamentals of gymnastics, mm -hmm. uh, and they had one more. They had swim. We did have swimming, but I couldn't take swimming. First of all, I would have to get into a, another uh, area because I needed I needed the fundamentals mm -hmm. of swimming. I didn't know how to swim. I knew I'd play in the water. That's all I could do. I guess and they wasn't were determined mm -hmm. that I was going to learn how to swim. And I was determined I was going to learn. But I didn't ever learn the swimming in that particular time. Of course, it was a conflict because it would interfere with... Uh, I was on the drill team. And when the drill team would be practicing... At the same time, they were having all these uh, stuff for for swimming. So therefore, when it got to that point, I was allowed to substitute an activity for that one, and I chose uh, some gymnastic things. That looked like more like football for me. Looked like football, and it as it looked like like basketball. Too. I said I can put all this stuff that I learned mm -hmm. into practice when you play in doing the gymnastics. Plus, they had music with. See, they were the teacher would turn on some music. Right now, it would be like the Olympics. Some music didn't I've, have any meaning to me. The floor but, exercises but, and all that stuff. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is nice, you know. I said, oh, I'm so glad I didn't know how to do certain things because otherwise I wouldn't be in this class. I thought it was a specially for class. It was a class that we, the children didn't know how to do certain things. They tried to get us ready for the big deal. But that was, that, that was high school. College. That was college. At, really? When I went to Virginia State College, the, 
I went into that division of, of sports. Mm. That's when I came a football, basketball fanatic. When they would say they would have a I look at my schedule and I said, oh, they're playing Union Saturday. They said, I know you're going. I said, we'll be there when the, day, when the gate opens. When we go in there, the field, in the stadium, the band would be here in the middle of the field. Down below would be the president, his wife, some of our, our coaches, some of our classroom teachers mm -hmm. uh, sitting in that row. Over here, you have a group of <coughs> students and some teachers over there. But we, I said the we, those who thought they knew everything, would be sitting near the band. So when the band was strike up a tune, we would or sing, make up a song with them. <clears throat> the president would say, now this is what you call a game. You get up and say it. This is what you know, this is what you call real football. I said, that guy is a regular president. He's not a he's not a book president. He, he's a president for all occasions. Bro, I just thought in my mind's eye that if you be, if you wanted to be a real president of a university or college, you must be able to know the games, not only know the games, be able to play the games. No one told me this. So I said to myself, self, you're going to have to stop making these assumptions because what you're thinking and what you're seeing are two different things. And they may not be the things that you want to remember the rest of your life. I was thinking that if you learn something in college, it was well enough for you to remember it because you'll always, always be called on to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me that that's not what they were doing on that field. Then they have these little girls from Union come over to say, we are from Union, don't you see? We're going to beat you, Lila Lee. They said, they said, Lila Lee. And I said, that's a cute little thing. But what's the Lila Lee? <laughs> I said, they're from Union. Union is a, a relig religious school. So I know they're not saying any bad words. I know that. But they were. But when they got over there where we were seated, it got to be Leela Ali. And I said, I misunderstood that. When the game was, they came over to say, uh, when you're in our area, we want you to see the union is and something is the place to be. I said, run, I guess, B and C. Brother, when they Turn around. Uh, State Virginia State's player had the ball, and you were saying, uh, she was, they start singing, saying, "Get them back, get them back, way back, <laughs> get them back, get them back, way back." <laughs> I said, "Why are they going way back?" The game was on the field. They had planned to play to do that cheer. And they were saying, get them way back. They were helping Virginia State. Virginia State was the one keeping, keeping them back. <laughs> and they were saying, get them back, get them back, way back. We were taught to be ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Not knowing why I was applauding. I was just doing it because you're supposed to be nice and say, you know, congratulations for your effort. 
I said to myself, I said, you know what, though? This is their first, probably their first game. And they don't know the difference. I'm giving them benefit of the doubt. Now, would that tell you that the Virginia State's team has to go on the Union side to welcome them to our stadium and to Petersburg and to the Virginia State University and its coaches and so I said, I said to myself, now we're going to see what's going on. The band struck up a tune. And our cheerleaders and the guys joined, came and went to the front of the Union fans, and they just stood like this. No, they didn't. They had a hand. Had it. Yeah, it was like this. I said, well, they're getting ready now. When the band started playing on the, from the opposite side of the field where we were, those girls and those guys were cheering as if they had been imported from the world's cheering society. Every person who really went to the left, every person went to the left. If they went to the right, they went to the right. If the band finished playing something and they had not finished their routine, they were so trained that they would freeze the position and wait till the band was ready to play some more. And then they would just go right back as if they had just taken a breath. Mm. President stood, stood up and said, when he came back, he said, let me say to you, I am a proud, proud father of you. And we are, we congratulate you. And don't ever mimic anything that is not first class. We didn't understand what he was talking about. I guess he said, don't be on that mimic and tell somebody to kick somebody way back and you talking to the wrong team. <laughs> he said, that, that doesn't work. Mm. But brother, they had a hill up on the hill behind the goalposts. You know, a lot of the students would come in and sit in the stands. And by the time halftime was ready, they had migrated up the hill, sitting on the grass, enjoying the game. But the reason we didn't go, I didn't go up there, because I didn't have a one decent pair of Bermuda shorts and knee socks that I had reserved for the game. You can't go up there on that grass and stuff, messing up your one pair. <laughs> I said, oh, they didn't have any money to get in the gate. I didn't know they <clears throat> just walked up there. You can just walk up there. Hmm. But my girlfriend, Margaret Ann, who just passed passed away in January, was dating a guy, and we, we, they called him Butterbee. Butterbee. If the score was getting low, I mean, close, somebody said, can't somebody sing something that would uh, cheer the team? Being said, I know, I know uh, the one they call Billy Boy. Somebody said, well, sing it, Bean. He said, but I need your help as my background. Somebody said, you sing it, and we'll do the background. We didn't know what the background, we had never heard the song before. Bean stands up from his seat in the bleachers and he says, I'm a blind man boy. Blind man boy. And we see, he said, You go say, oh. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. He said, And when I, and when I die, I'll be a blind man dead. Mm -hmm. I looked down there. Who was standing up singing with us? The president. 
Then Bing said, and when I die, oh, he said, oh, my man, my man, my man. The folks in the band said, boom, boom. Whether they let me say it, they, they did it. Then the president now made the clap in his hand. He said, I'm going to call this my man, Billy Boy. Dr. Daniels did not ever forget that we could be playing with anybody and we'd be behind and Dr. Daniels would turn around and say, where's my man? No, where's Billy Boy? B said, right here. You stand up and say, I'm a blind man born. We would say, hmm. We looked at, by the time we got to the last part, and when I die, I'll be a blind man dead. Who was over there? The, the opposing team member, uh, fans would be joining in with us. And immediately, the scores started getting closer and closer. The more we did, my man, Billy Boy. After a while, Virginia State started climbing the score line. Of course, he was doing my man, Billy Boy. And that stayed with us the whole time I was at Virginia State. My man, Billy Boy. To the president was saying, he would come to the game, he said, Look at that score. <laughs> they said, yeah, we're not doing so well right tonight. He said, where is, where is uh, my man, where is my man, Billy Boy? They said, he's sitting over there. And the doctor then you would say, my man, my man, my man. He could not sing. But he was doing that part, my man. He knew what song he was asking for. Brother, let me tell you. I learned when I was at Virginia State, just because you go to a, quote, religious school, it doesn't mean that the people who go there are that religious. <laughs> and they don't, have to, they don't watch their mouths. Hmm. The worst hazing that I could remember when I was in college was from Union University and two other schools. They were all quote religious training institution. Mm. I mean they were not nice. I just call it nice. Well, you know, this 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 is really the problem because I think a lot of times uh, especially when you're very, um, when you say really you have your code too strong, there has to, the, the people have to have an outlet. I mean, I learned that from um, reading a, a book called Pagan Spain by Richard Wright. Uh -uh. And he was saying, he was, he was talking about Spain and how the Catholic Church had such a grip on people that uh -huh. they would have, when you have things like, say, a bullfight, well, do with, or, you know, f f even just say, say, well, a flamenco is like, well, say a flamenco dance. Okay. Well, the women would have the low cut thing so you could see the cleavage because yeah. that was the only way they could express their sexuality because the Catholic Church was so, you know, rigid okay. on it. The same thing with Mardi Gras and like that, 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 that right before Lent, you have Mardi Gras because you have to get all that out of you to be yes, pious. You do. So, so, you, so they're always looking for an escape valve to this, to this um, uh, I don't know what, how to call it, to, to this uh, stranglehold that, that, that these people, that, you know, that the religion calls for, the school calls that for. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I learned that from Richard Wright. <laughs> you see, Union was invited uh, to come on, on State's campus when the line, they were getting ready to do the last part of being online for you be inducted as an AKA or Kappa or Alpha or whatever. Because the reputation that they, they had gotten, that if you wanted to have a real line, real sisters, real brothers, you have to invite Union University's departments to come, uh, people to come and participate. It's, it's nice, you know. That sounds kind of mixed. I, I, I know you're not saying this, 
but it almost sounds like to have a real team, you have to have everybody, the good, the the, the, the good people, the bad people, and everybody in between. Good, if you want bad, a real and team. indifferent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what it ended up being. There is a railroad track uh, at the foot of, near the foot of the hill at Virginia State. One of the places we went, when they took us to let us know that it was off campus, the waterfall area that was off campus, the train railroad uh, station was off campus, and something else was off campus only because the the danger uh, involved. And also, you have to go over private property that says, do not cross over or do not enter we thought, and what was happening with us on the hill, that if you say you do not, that means you don't do it. Mm-hmm. Well, this particular night when we had the Union University uh, ladies there, they got to the railroad crossing. Now, that's the first thing. They went across it. The sign that said, do not cross, do not enter. That means you don't go over there. You may look at it, but you don't go over there. Who was the first person to go over there? The girls from Union University went right across the line as if it said, Welcome. Crossover, please. <laughs> they read it differently than they do. <laughs> they, they well, read, let me tell you. Maybe they're just re- reading between the lines. <laughs> yeah, they could have been. <laughs> But the the guy who is the uh, the guy on the train <laughs> said something to I guess he may have said something to our sponsor. Said, "Are they aware they're not supposed to go over there?" And she said, "Yes." Are they aware? It says, "Do not." cross over here, do not enter or something. She said, yes. Oh, it's just for the people who are visiting, but not for the folks on from the hill, talking about us. Hmm. She said, I'm not sure. I know ours better not cross over and it better not enter. He said, oh, because they can read better. She said, no. It's just obeying the rules. One girl from Union came over and said, well, when you finish talking about all this little girly stuff, tell the, the conductor, from the, the guy from the train, I talk about all this girly stuff. Can we get on with the show? I said, oh, they're going to perform. I thought they were going to perform, to perform something. Patriotic or spiritual or something. And the girl took out a paddle. Uh, I said, This is not a football game. This is not badminton. This is not. She had the paddle. And I said, well, What is she going to do with that? We were not instructed that we had to know the, ga- this, the game. A paddle. When that girl from Union told us to turn around, well, that's a big sister, you know, and we she's been invited, so we turned around, facing them. We looked behind. There was not only one girl with the paddle; there was some more with the paddles. They were turning around to paddle us. And I said, I know they're not going to hit me with that piece of wood. And when they walked up to us, we were in line according to our number. And I think, and I think to height too, because I was number two. There was a girl, Elizabeth Odie was a little shorter than I. She was number one. And that was number two. That girl had raised her hand with that paddle in her hand and going to hit Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth screamed and said, Don't do that anymore. Don't hit me anymore. I said, They're hitting her. And she didn't go across, she didn't go across that track that said, Do not enter or do not cross. But no one said anything. I didn't say a word. I just cringed and said, Please don't let that girl hit me because I don't know what she'll do next. When she hit the child the second time and she screamed again, the girl who was chair, uh, bosses in our chapter there said, immediately I'd like to speak with you, their supervisor, who was traveling with them. And she said, if I had known, if we had known, this is what you do when people are going into a sorority and the other person, or a fraternity, mm. if that's what you do, she said, that is not what we do on the hill. How can you beat somebody? And then she used the word beat. How can we beat somebody? tonight and hug them the next night and say welcome sister this was not a sister this is not a, a sisterly act so one girl said if you finish preaching we can get back on the we can get back in our cars they have cars I said these girls are rich they're mean but they're rich and she said, if we are excused, madam, she said to her. I said, at least she said something that was polite. I didn't know that was sarcasm at that time. They got on, got to their, off the hill, or down there by the track, went up the hill to get into their cars. And one girl said, oh, it's a uh, in the future, would you not invite us to come to our baby, a baby sorority training or something? Mm -hmm. And the girl who was our boss was in that chapter, she said, you can be there, believe it, put it in your hat, put it in your soup, and put it in your something, she said, that you will not be invited. And I, she said, as uh, president of the chapter, going to report this to our advisors. Mm -hmm. Brother, Union didn't ever come back on that campus for well, fraternity or sorority time mm -hmm. because the reputation <clears throat> got around how rough they were. Mm -hmm. And paddling was not a thing. Well, not if you, yeah, not especially now if you he came out of a... And if I did, <coughs> the girl said, how can you beat somebody tonight? Well, especially if you come from a, a lineage of slavery, that's where you get beat in slavery. It does not seem like a good lineage memory. <laughs> Every, it's the things that we were told that we'll, we're going through this period not to see how rough you can be not to see how something that you could be we're going to replace the words with rough to gentleness it's alright to be gentle mm -hmm. we're going to replace the language not with language but with a gentle mixed company language mm -hmm. And so, therefore, your job is twofold because you're going to hear of, of chapters being resolved. You're going to hear about people having to go to court. I said, why you have to go to court to get in a sorority or fraternity? I didn't realize that people can be, we could be sued. Mm -hmm. And make it a legal matter, you'll be in court. 
depends on what that infraction was. Brother, from then on, when we had to go to a union for a concert or for any an event, I kept looking <laughs> in the at our audience of all those people. See if I could find some of those girls who would have done that. I was looking. I didn't ever see those girls. Someone would say, no, you know what? They may have not been union students. They may have gotten some people who so who want to go over over the on the hill, they have the line coming off soon. Mm. And they just volunteered. Mm. And came on over. I said, they said, if you go over there to their sorority room there, and you look in there, I bet you wouldn't find one of those people in that room. Uh, so this was a sorority scam. <laughs> I mean, I see. so I said, maybe that's why they didn't say union uh, uh, school of religion. They wouldn't, wouldn't do that. So Walter said, when he was at Shaw, Walter was on the wrestling team. He played, uh, I think he was in his ball, a sport, 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 football, and he played, he played baseball. I think Walter played just about all the sports uh, that they had at Shaw. Sometimes he was at like the captain of a, uh, a team because sometimes they didn't have the teachers the personnel to do all this but if they had a student who could do it that person would substitute until they got a teacher there you know mm -hmm. so he was accustomed to that all uh, the kind of different sports but the one thing he was not accustomed to was uh, their little pitiful equipment. And I said, Walter, that was pitiful. And he said, do you know what they don't need? We don't even have a decent foot, no, basketball net. So we have to use makeshift. I didn't ever ask him what's a makeshift basketball net. Because I can imagine if they were that pitiful and poor, they couldn't afford a basketball net. I mean, that's expensive, I thought. He said, but though after a while, all that out-of-date stuff, the make-believe stuff, he said, it became the thing we look forward to. And when they got, he said that we got so rich that we could afford certain things, we would just look at that and marvel and say, this is beautiful. Oh, I'm so glad we got rich enough. Because they, they put wealth with which you can have the equipment that you see on television or hear about it in the news, see it in the newspaper. I said, well, Walter, when you went over to the games, did you have to sit in a special place? He said, oh, yeah, where the students were, the student section. And they had the, the I, he said he called it the, uh, teacher section to so see that most of them would be in that section. He said, but you know, I don't think the teachers missed a game or whatever we had to play. They always had the teachers there supporting and encouraging you. After you have a meal, mm -hmm. they'll make an announcement. The mighty Shaw Bears will be playing St. Augustine's, something, what they would call this, uh, and it, it take the time. Please make it your business to be out there to support our team. I'll be there mm. looking for you and cheering with you. <laughs> I said, Walter, would that person go? She said, he said, yes, indeed. So the teachers attended the more activities than the students did. Because a student said, oh, they're playing them tonight. 
We don't have to go to that. Hmm. They didn't think they had to go to that. They made the doc. They made the decision that whenever the team participates and plays, whether it's the team that has been beating you every time or you've been winning every time. Your job is to go there and to support your team. That's it. That's what it's about. Support. That is the word. And Walter said, didn't have to tell him. He said, because that was his recreation. He couldn't, he didn't have any money to do certain things. Mm. But he could go and sit in a seat because mm. that was a part of in your tuition sports mm. fee. And support. There you go. Yes, indeed. He said, and the president of see, every president they've had, he could recall, was sports minded. I said, "Well, that was nice, Walt." He said, "But they were also music minded." Because <laughs> he had a nice choir. He said, "Not only that, the band was minded. The teacher was the band con- person." He said. Maybe that was a criteria that if you're going to teach it, you should know the sport or the activity. 